let's uh, quickly look at the convolution sum. Again, here we have a discrete time system described by h sub n, where h sub n is the impulse response. Again, our input, our arbitrary input, is described by this sequence for this example. And our corresponding impulse response due to a single impulse is described by this h n. We have our input sequence decomposed into a time weighted shifted impulse and our output is described in terms of a weighted sum of impulse responses. Again, our input is decomposed into these series of impulses. It's weighted and time shifted described by this equation here. Where we substitute our x0, x1, and x2 by the corresponding impulses that are weighted and time shifted. I'm going to show you a procedure involving the convolution sum and basically it uses a tabular form. We'll use this example and then we'll demonstrate it with a MATLAB example. It results in this process right here where we have arbitrary input n. Here's our corresponding impulse response due to a single impulse that has unit magnitude. Here we'll evaluate n equals 0 to 4. We'll see why. And we'll start off with our first input as a result of this impulse with a weight of 3. And because it's with no time shift. Now let's look at the second part of this sequence or the, with the weight of 2 shifted by 1. Well, if it's shifted by 1 with a weight of 2, this impulse response will be shifted by 1, and we double the input. So this is shown right here. We have a 0 in this, in our, where n equals 0, and we have a corresponding output due to x1 resulting from this, and we could see that it's shifted by 1 with a, and doubling the weights from here. So 4, 2, and 6. Likewise, the next one at 2, we call this x2, at, n e at k equals 2 for n. We have y2n for x2 of n equals, where it's shifted by 2, that's why there's a 0 in here, and has a weight of 1, so we'll just keep these uh, numbers right here, 2, 1, 3. So this is the three outputs as a result of these individual impulses located at 0, 1, and 2. Adding these, due to the superposition and linearity property associated with this system, we get 6, 7, 13, 7, and 6 at the corresponding ends right here. So adding up all those inputs, we get an equivalent mathematical description of 6 delta n at n, 7 delta at n minus 1, 13 at delta n minus 2, 7 with an impulse located at n minus 3, and a weight of 3 located for this impulse at n equal 4. So that's the mathematical description. Hopefully you see we both use the linearity as a result of the super zip superposition and the time shift resulting from the time invariance property where the response impulse response just changes when we shift the input and weigh the input okay so that's the first process here at the MATLAB window we're going to demonstrate the concept of discrete time convolution sum here we have an input let's say 3 2, and 1. So that's our input vector, input signal. We have our impulse response as 2, 1, and 3. And then our output is simply the convolution between our input x and our impulse response h. So here we use the CONV function which stands for convolution and it's convolution between our input x and our impulse response h which yields an answer of 6, 7, 13, 7, and 3. Same as before, in which we'll see in using two techniques to demonstrate this by longhand. But as you can see with MATLAB, this is very easily computed 
using the CONV function, which stands for convolution. So here, we're going to do another example of convolution. This time we're going to convolve two pulse trains. So we'll generate a signal A. We're going to use several functions. One is the zeros, where we have one row and two columns. Another one with ones, one row, and four columns. Then we'll have zeros again with one row, two columns. We'll close that bracket here, and that should generate a pulse. And that's what we have here, two zeros, four ones, and two zeros. Now we're going to convolve it with itself, and we should have like a triangle function. So y equals the convolution between a and a. And what we should have is a triangular. So here, at our output, y, we see it starts at zero and begins to ramp up and then starts to ramp down and then zero again and that's the resulting output due to the convolution we can define a vector b maybe we can make it wider so we'll put uh, a wider pulse in terms of ones so we'll put a zero ones one row of ones and we'll make it width of six and then a zero again. So that's what we have, zero, six ones, and a zero. Now we'll convolve it, we'll have our output y2, which is equal to the convolution of a comma b, and we should have it like a trapezoid instead of a triangle, since one is wider than the other. And that's what we have, so we have zeros, then it starts to ramp up, then flattens out, and then wraps down again. So these are examples of how we use the convolution function to demonstrate uh, the interaction of the input signals and the impulse response. And in this case, we had we use two pulses, one with the same width, and the other with different widths. And it always results in a output that is wider than either of the input or the impulse response.